Hey cruisers, I'm Sherry with CruiseShipsTV.com. I have been on Sun Princess for five days now and can't wait to give you my review and impressions of this ship. There's so much to share with you, so this is going to be a little bit of a longer video with lots of images and video to help you get a feel for this ship. Now, what we're going to talk about today is what is different on the ship, what's exciting about the ship, some tips and tricks that you need to know, and also we're going to answer a lot of questions that have been coming in about Sun Princess over the last week or so since I've been on. Now remember, I haven't had a full voyage here to give you guys a complete review because five days on a brand new ship, to be quite honest, it's not really enough to experience absolutely everything. So I'm going to do my best, but if I miss any of your questions, just let me know down below. And we'll also try to do a live stream where we answer all of your Sun Princess questions. Also wanted to let you know that the menus for the main dining room, the specialty dining restaurants, and all of the bars on board, as well as five days of the Princess Patters are going to be linked in the description of this video. And we also have a balcony stateroom video just for you. All right, let's get started. Are you guys ready? I have to, <laughs> I have to use my notes because there's just too many different questions coming in. So let's do this. Let's talk first about what is different about this ship. Well, the first thing that you'll notice when you see uh, videos of some princess or you step on board is just that the entire design of the ship is completely different, right? This is a completely reimagined ship. It's very modern. It is larger. It is the largest of the princess fleet so far. And it really does have a very different layout and design and look and feel. And that was on purpose. Princess is changing things. This is the future of their fleet. So the design and the size are notably different. Now, another thing, if you're a princess loyalist that you're going to notice when you're on this ship is that the piazza is very, very different. It still has that center of the ship feel, that hub of the ship feel. It's still a multi-layer venue, but the look and the feel are different. There's some theater seating. There's still lots of entertainment that will happen down on the ground floor, but the most notable and the most talked about change in the piazza is the fact that the International Cafe has been moved from what's normally kind of the lower level or the ground floor of the piazza up to the third floor, which is actually deck nine. So that really, when you first board, if you're used to princess, you're going to be really thrown off and think, wait a minute, where's the, where's the coffee shop? Where's the international cafe? Thankfully, there's lots of other coffee venues on this ship as well. So you don't only have the international cafe. And that's something that I think people didn't realize at first when they boarded, they thought, oh, that's the coffee shop. That's what you're used to. There's actually several other places that you're going to find um, coffee. Another huge difference on Sun Princess is the location of the buffet, which is no longer called the buffet. They actually call it the eatery. The eatery is actually right behind the International Cafe. So what you do is you just keep walking right past the International Cafe on deck nine. You'll see a sign that says the eatery, and that is how you enter into the buffet. We're used to having our buffets up on the Lido deck on most ships, right? Not all but most, and that's a significant difference on this vessel. So just understand that that's how things are gonna be there. Now also, remember that in a past video I mentioned to you that the eatery is different in another way. And I think this is a good thing. I was a little skeptical at first, but I think I like it. And that is that the eatery is a full serve buffet, meaning that the staff serve you. You never will go up and touch a pair of tongs on this ship. It's just not the way that they've done it. And I think that it is working well, well in terms of crowd control. I think that it works well in terms of food quality and the area is very well staffed. Now, something else that you'll notice when you're in the buffet, at least this was my observation, is I didn't see any self-serve beverage kiosks. At first I thought it was something that I just noticed up by the pool, but I actually think that it's the same way in the buffet too, but there's lots of folks there to help and bring you drinks. And um, in some of the venues, they even have pitchers of water right on the table, which is quite nice. And when I say some of the venues, what happens with the eatery is that it actually extends aft 
And the two specialty restaurants that occupy the back of the ship, so the Catch by Rudy and the Butcher's Block restaurant, actually are overflow for the buffet when it gets busy. And in those venues, I noticed that they had pitchers of water waiting for you, and then the staff would come around and offer you drinks. So that is very, very different. Another element that's different that a lot of people ask me for my honest opinion on is the elevators. So they have the smart elevators. Some people call them dynamic elevators. And what that means is on the ship, when you approach an elevator, you press a button on the outside of the elevator bank, indicating where you want to go. The elevator screen will then tell you which elevator is going to come pick you up. You will then proceed to that elevator. And then once you enter the elevator, you do not push another button. It just takes you to your destination. If you've never experienced this kind of an elevator before, it's going to feel really new to you, but I actually love it. It's extremely fast. There was only one time when I had a little bit of a wait for an elevator and it made perfect sense. I think everybody was, you know, coming back on from a busy port day, but it was nothing like some of the waits that I've experienced before. So this is just, it's just smart and it's just a technological advancement that makes elevators work better. So I've seen zero downsides with that. Another thing that I've noticed that is a little bit different is that there are an enormous amount of new cocktails on this ship. When we were given a tour on the first day, we were told that they created over 200 new cocktails for Sun Princess. That's a lot of new drinks and they're delicious. They also have the most stunning drinkware on this ship. You get like these Mad Men vibes, beautiful, elevated, gorgeous drinkware, and that really stood out to me. I was asked, what are some of the most exciting parts about Sun Princess. And I have to tell you, when I was getting ready to come on this ship, I had an entirely different list. I had the things I thought I was going to be excited about, and it didn't turn out that those things were my favorite parts or that those were the most exciting at all. I thought I was going to be excited about um, the new sports deck. I thought I was going to be excited about the Irish pub. And it really turned out that my list of loves is totally different. So let's get started. First thing I have to tell you guys is that Spellbound, the collaboration with the Magic Castle is absolutely phenomenal. They've done an incredible job of pulling it off. And I just cannot wait for you all to do this. Now, how do you book Spellbound? Well, Spellbound is actually a dining and entertainment experience. So starting on the April 8th voyage, going forward, you can book Spellbound and it will be in the dining section of your reservation or apps in advance of your cruise or on your cruise. There are three seatings per night, five o'clock, seven o'clock, and nine o'clock, and each of them hold 30 people. It is a three-course meal followed by a, a cocktail experience and then kind of a magic experience is essentially what it is. I don't want to spoil it too much, but do go to Instagram, look at my reel. And of course, I'm rolling a little footage here for you so you guys can see what to expect. The cocktails are not to be missed and you're going to enjoy it. I highly recommend it. And I would say that it's worth the money and it's something that I'm really excited for you to try. The other thing that I love is the dome. It is beautiful. The dome pool is one of my favorite parts. There's like a swim through pool that goes kind of from the outside to the inside and it's just really cool. The pool is heated and it's one of my favorite things. The new menus on board the ship are very exciting. Be sure to check those out in the description of this video. I really just think that the food is elevated and that this ship has become more of a foodie destination. The other thing that I just love is that aft infinity pool, guys. And the aft kind of look of the ship is so different than anything else that Princess has ever done. It's dramatic. There's incredible views back there. Now, if you're staying on one of these, these floors, like I think it's like decks 13 through maybe 17, if you walk all the way to the back of your deck, there's a little door that opens and you can just stand out there and look down. There's no seating or anything, but that's something that someone else told me that I've really enjoyed. So it's kind of a little secret tip for you is to walk all the way aft. Now, speaking of that, this ship is huge, guys. It is really, really big. I am generally someone who likes to book a cabin all the way forward or aft on a ship. I will tell you, I've been all the way forward on this ship. And if you book a forward cabin, it's a lot of walking to every destination. I might consider midship or aft for more accessibility on this ship 
just to make it so that you're not walking quite as much. So we talked about what's exciting. We talked about what's different. I'm going to talk about some, some other things that we've done. What ports do we visit? What do we do in those ports? And then I want to talk about the stateroom. So the first port that we visited was Kusadasi in Turkey. Most people go to Ephesus when they're in Kusadasi. Um, I, along with Ilana from Lifeful Cruise and her family, we had a wonderful time and we went on an excursion to a winery and the winery experience was absolutely exceptional. We booked through Princess and it was one of the most relaxing excursions I think I've ever done. Our entire stop in Santorini was canceled due to some formalities with the tender boats here on Sun Princess. So we went to a port called Hanya in Crete, and I decided to rest that day, film the ship, and not get off the ship because I was falling behind on recording things for you all. So I felt that that was better, and I'm glad that I stayed on board because I was able to see a lot more, uh, experience more of the dining, and it was great. Our last stop today was in Naples. And again, with Princess, I did a foodie walking tour. It was exceptional. If you are looking for this excursion in Naples to Princess, I think it's called just that, the foodie walking tour. Oh my goodness. I thought it was going to be little small bites of food. And that, you know, you finish the tour and you're like, okay, now let's go grab some lunch. No, this was exceptional. Not only did we get a wonderful little tour of Naples within walking distance of the ship, but we started off with some delicious coffee, some espresso, and a beautiful little pastry. Then we sat down for our main course, which was a full caprese salad, a full caprese salad, a full glass of wine. You could choose from white or red or get a soda. I had the white. It was phenomenal. And then you guys, each of us basically got half of a pizza. And it was so fresh and so beautiful. But that wasn't it. After that, we went and had some gelato. I had the dark chocolate. And my friends Dawn and Heidi had a few other flavors. I think that they had the hazelnut and the milk chocolate. And it was just lovely. And then we walked back to the ship. It was the perfect, perfect uh, length of a tour. And I really tell you, it just... You know, it painted Naples in such a great light. And I know that Naples isn't always everyone's favorite destination, but you should do this tour because it will become your favorite destination. So those were our ports. And tomorrow I'm flying home. So how was the stateroom? Wow. As you can see, I'm in my balcony right now. This is called the deluxe balcony. I have a full room tour coming to kind of give you guys, gosh, the full look at it in a, in a nine minute walkthrough because there's so much to talk about. But let me tell you about some things that I'm very excited about and that I think you're going to love as well. First of all, glass shower doors, no more sticky shower curtain. Second, full size dry bar hair dryer. I'm totally serious. Third, full size toiletries from Beekman, which is a wonderful brand. You've got hand soap and hand lotion on the vanity, full size. And in the shower, you have shampoo, conditioner, and body wash. Now, the new closets, you will love them. I know that everybody is like, oh, I'm going to miss the walk-in closet. There is so much space in those closets. I really don't think you're going to miss the walk-in. And the room is really nice and easy to move around. And of course, the bed, you guys. The bed is absolutely, incredibly comfortable. So the princess bed just never, ever ever lets you down. All right. So some more questions from our audience. How was the staff served buffet? I think I answered that a little earlier too. I think it's pretty cool. There's only one downside and one thing I would tell you, and that's that when you have a staff served buffet, a lot of times they try to hand you a new plate every time you get something from a new station. So when you get a salad, that comes in a bowl. When you get some fruit, that comes in another bowl. And then you wanna get a little bit of this, that, and the other thing, and all of a sudden you have all these plates. You have to be vocal and say, hey, could you just put a little chicken parmesan on my salad plate? And try to have them add things to your plate or you know, go put things down and then come back and get more. Folks also wanted to know what is the average age, the demographic, what kind of people are on this cruise? And I will tell you the demographic on the ship is younger than I have ever seen on a princess cruise. I'm not talking about an average age of 25 or even 35. I still think the average demographic, the average age on the ship is probably upwards of 55, but I have seen a lot of younger folks. Um, uh, a lot of people in their 40s, a lot of people in their 50s. 
and a very um, fun group. People definitely staying up late at night and enjoying the bars. A lot of people enjoying the casino. The casino is beautiful on the ship. It's got a real Vegas look to it. And it seems like the casino was a really big hit on this cruise. So I'd say the demographic is a little bit younger. Now, this is the big question of the day. When you walk on this ship and you're a seasoned princess cruiser, you've been on lots of princess cruises like I have, will, because of all the changes and the fact that this is a newer design, does the ship still have that feeling of being home? Well, I got to tell you, it depends on how open-minded you are. I think that if you have experienced the royal class of ships, so any of those six ships, this transition is going to be a lot easier for you. If you're going straight from the much older princess ships to this ship, it's going to feel really different. But if you tell yourself there's going to be new surprises and new places that feel like home to you, you're probably going to love it. Is the piazza going to feel a little bit different? Yes. Is it going to take you longer to walk from one end of the ship to another? Yeah. You're going to need to watch where you book your cabin. Will the buffet feel a little different for you? Yes. Will the dining room feel a little different with the new three levels, which I don't even think we're going to go into that today because that's probably another video in and of itself. But I feel that the princess software is still here. The exceptional warmth of the staff, the desire for them to always improve and be better. It's here and it still feels like home to me. And I love the ship and I would love to bring my family back. It is a big ship though, guys. It's a big ship. So, you know, it's not a massive, huge mega ship, but it's much bigger than what you're used to. Are all of the venues finished and ready? The answer is as of now, as of the second full sailing, no, they're not. The arena does not have any full size shows in it. Although I now understand after going to rehearsals in the arena, I understand why how after Princess took delivery of the ship, how there has to be weeks and weeks and weeks of safety checks and training that go into preparing those shows. And you guys, there's so many acrobatic feats and so many different elements to the shows. You cannot just snap your fingers and have the dancers show up. They are not your typical production shows. There's so many elements that have to line up. And so when Princess took delivery of the ship, they just started that process and it's still going on and they are in there full time rehearsing and getting the ship ready for you. It will be ready soon and it will be worth the wait. I cannot wait to come back and see Cirque Aloise and some of the other shows in the arena. The arena is so cool. It's a theater in the round and you guys are going to absolutely love it. So that's not ready. The sports deck area is not ready. They're up there. They ha they're testing the robes course all the time. There's people on it. They're testing it. But safety is their number one concern. They're coordinating vendors and people from all over the world to make sure that, that everyone is safe. Let me actually just take a couple moments to talk about some of the new food venues because I really didn't do that. Let's talk about the Butcher Block by Dario and Umai. Princess has their first teppanyaki and Japanese restaurant on board. It's a combination of a teppanyaki restaurant in the middle and a hot pot restaurant around the outside. If you've never done a hot pot experience, you're going to love this. It's basically like a shabu shabu thing, right? Where you cook meats, vegetables, and seafood in boiling broths. It is, um, you're only sharing with your own party, so you're not going to be dipping into broth with strangers or anything like that. This is just for your party. You get one pot that's divided in half, and so you can cook different things on different sides. So if you had a vegetarian, they could cook it in the Tom Cobb, you know, broth. It's like a coconut lemongrass. And the person with the meat could cook in the miso broth, right? Such a fun experience. This is the Umai hot pot. Again, so hot pot is around the edges of this restaurant and teppanyaki is in the middle. And the teppanyaki is a normal teppanyaki experience with the chef singing and, and chopping everything on a hot grill in front of you. Japanese noodles, meats, the typical starters and the typical, you know, fruit sashimi or green tea dessert. That is a treat. The real different dining experience is the new restaurant from Dario. 
if you are a meat aficionado, if you love beef, or if you love food from Tuscany, or true Tuscan family dining experience that's centered around meat, you've got to try the Butcher Block by Dario. It's an incredible experience. Um, the meat just keeps coming and coming. A lot like if you were at a Brazilian steakhouse, you know how they bring, they keep bringing the cuts of meat. Really lovely. They put a big bottle of Chianti wine on the table for you to pour. You could order other drinks if you want. And you're going to want to make sure that you stay for dessert. The olive oil cake that they serve was easily one of the favorite parts of this whole entire meal experience for, for folks who are with me. Also, if you're a vegetarian, you can eat at Dario's. They have a full vegetarian course that comes out with the meats for everybody else. So if you're okay with being around all that meat, you're going to love it. It's a lot of fun. All right, friends, enjoy your cruise on Sun Princess. Let me know if you're booked and let me know, of course, if you have any questions. If you're new here, please be sure to subscribe. If you've been around and you're a dear friend of us already here at Cruise Tips TV, would you take a moment and give me a quick thumbs up? It really, truly does make a huge difference to us. We appreciate you so very much. And until next time, we'll see you on the high seas.